What's up, guys? Quick update from my laboratory, which some of you might call the mad scientist <laughs> lab here. So I've been working on my voltage regulator, my high voltage regulator circuit and some ideas. This is a microprocessor. Of course, it's starting to turn ugly from uh, having to redo a few things on it, which always happens when I'm kind of doing my own little R&D. Little LCD there, display my uh, duty cycle and the output frequency. So basically, what I'm doing, and some of this stuff, of course, is successful tests so far. Um, so I have a potentiometer right here, which just for testing, varying the voltage into this optical isolator here. The optical isolator um, will basically vary an output. Uh, 5 volts going into the analog input of the microprocessor. The reason I'm using optical isolators is because eventually right here will be uh, voltage fed in from the high voltage from the around 300 volts DC, you know, going up to like 330 when the solar brings it up to 330. I'm trying to keep the utility power regulated so it'll draw off the solar. So I'll use a voltage divider just to get this down with, uh, for the current, you know, within the range I wanted to uh, uh, switch the isolator output. So that works. And then what I'm doing is I got a pulse width modulated output varying on the, uh, right now it's just not programmed like it will be when it's finished, but it's just programmed just for doing testing and I can vary my duty cycle by turning the potentiometer. So it shows that the optical isolator is feeding, it's coupling with the power. Right now I just have a MOSFET over here switching, it's directly switching the uh, uh, full rectified voltage coming out of a little 24 volt step down transformer. You know, for testing I'm just using low voltage. And then it goes to the capacitor and then over to the fan. And it would be like 30 volts if I just cranked it to 100% duty cycle, but it's, I'm regulating it just for down to about 12 volts that the fan needs. Um, the thing that I'm messing with right now, which I might have to go to plan B, is that when I, I need an optical isolator in between the microchip and the MOSFET because the MOSFET's going to be switching very high voltage, 300 volts, basically. 330 actually coming in from the utility. I'm trying to step it down to 300 regulated. So I need an optical isolator for that. And when I was looking for optical isolators, I'm used to using these kind of optical isolators, which is your normal photo, you know, uh, LED diode in, and then your uh, regular, uh, I don't want to say photo diode, but you know, basically transistor type output, but um, which is what most of them are, NPN photo transistor, yep. Well, I ordered this because I saw it and it caught my eye. I was like, hey, this is made for driving MOSFETs. So it's an optical isolator made for this kind of stuff I'm doing. I noticed the terminals were just labeled like plus and minus instead of, you know, collector and emitter. I thought that was kind of weird. But when I didn't realize I got some weird waveforms when I tried to uh, switch a voltage on the output, like I normally would, biasing it like a transistor or whatever, is that it's a not a phototransistor. It is a, what does it say it? photovoltaic which is uh, like basically a miniature solar cell built into these um, there it is dual voto photovoltaic <laughs> MOSFET there it is so basically when you put uh, you, 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 you uh, use current to drive the LED inside the light shines on the photovoltaic you know, element in there, like a miniature solar panel, it actually creates its own voltage. So that's actually trying to get about, and it says this will make about 5 volts, typical open circuit voltage, 5.5 uh, 5 voltage. And it can only do so many milliamps, but MOSFETs use voltage to drive the gate, but they don't need hardly any current. I think somebody said they're like in the nanoamps usually, so being that this thing uh, shorted, it could make 2.5 microamps. You know, it's like a lot more than what a MOSFET usually requires to drive the gate. So, 
Kind of interesting. So basically, the voltage coming out of that thing, seen on that scope. I don't know why this ain't focusing, guys. Um, is purely generated inside this chip. It's isolated input. I'm just uh, driving an LED, and you can see I parallel resistors a few times trying to get more current to the LED, just experimenting. And then it makes its own voltage coming out. It's <laughs> the light is coupled to the <laughs> photovoltaic output making the voltage on the output and then I have that going just to the MOSFET and it's pretty much working looks ugly when it's tied to the MOSFET if I uh, that take it off I can see what the actual waveform is like but the thing I'm getting is it's not consistent once I get down um, and it, the not, this thing's getting really crazy, Maya. This scope is pretty much about had it. So it gets, the voltage really starts dropping when I get the duty cycle down there. And then you can kind of see how it should look. So it's almost like I need even more current to the diode input. And it, that looks pretty good, but then look at that. It starts, the voltage starts getting weird when I get towards the upper end of the duty cycle. It doesn't actually, so doing that, it's not going to switch off the MOSFET completely in between each pulse there, so that's no good. So, uh, so I might have to go to back to plan A, which is just to use a regular optical isolator, run a separate 5 volt power supply, probably, you know, and just switch it. It'd be basically like a transistor switching 5 volts to the MOSFET, but it'll be perfect, it'll be good, it'll be a pretty good square, you know, square wave no matter what the pulse width is, or frequency in the range I'm using, but this thing, I don't know, I'm not used to using it, but it's giving me some crap, I guess if I just stuck around, you know, 50% duty cycle or so, just to make some good on and off pulses, it would look okay, but at the low range, it's crap, Look at that. Doesn't it wouldn't it's not gonna turn on the MOSFET all the way. That's bad. You need MOSFETs biased on all the way. And off all the way. So when you get to the upper end it does that. That's crap. So anyway. I'm glad I didn't drop this chip on here. This is already too messed up, so I'm probably gonna have to eventually when I get this all working the way I want it, I might have to just start from scratch to rebuild a good clean version of it. Or maybe, you know, use a... PCB Express or whatever it's called or one of those other ones, EDA, whatever it's called, I forgot what they're called, that, you know, where you can design your circuit board and then a company etches it and sends it to you. And then I get circuit boards, you know, I'm trying to find one of my circuit boards that's not ugly. But like, you know, here's a breadboard that's not too bad. My camera won't focus for shit. I don't know what's with the Samsung right now. Um, and I've made, like here's one, one of my... One from a long time ago, but I've like hacked it apart. That's such a shitty one. Oh, here we go. Uh, rejects. These are some that I had made. Oh, here they are. Yeah. These are, uh, come on, focus. So, and you see that's a surface mount, and my eyes are getting bad, so I kind of gave up on using these, but these are some boards I made that I put a little tiny surface mount chips on. There's a crappy one. I'm trying to see where I have some other ones. Here's one. This is a... And then, but when I fry them, man, I fry these little... That's the voltage regulator chip I'm using, which is only good for an amp. And then my little... When I fry these chips, it sucks because I can't just easily unsolder them and solder them. It just tears it up. And my soldering iron melts the buttons and everything. So that's what happens. So for now, I've kind of went back to just using full-size P-dip microprocessors. So this is just basically my own little R&D lab or whatever you want to call it. And this video is going to suck because half of it's going to be out of focus. But anyway, that's what I'm up to. Um, now I'm going to give up for the night. And like I said, I'll go to, I'm going to make another board with a regular uh, optical isolator and see if I can get a little better results tomorrow or so. Stay tuned.